gaze through my eye for a vision of Midgard, the realm of mortals, in all its splendor and chaos. Tap the landmarks and learn their legends. You never know what's lurking around the corner in this realm of many mysteries. Midgard, the realm of mortals, a rich, fertile land filled with an immense variety of life. At the midpoint of the great world tree, Yggdrasil, it is the centre of all the realms. Alfheim, land of the elves. Constant conflict between the dark elves and light elves rages in this realm. Control of the light of Alfheim is the source of this discord. Helheim, the land of the dead. A place of unyielding cold and home to the souls of those who did not die in glorious combat. Muspelheim, the land of fire, home to the fire giants. Surtur, the greatest of these giants, created a series of strenuous challenges here, known as Surtur's Gauntlet. Niflheim, the land of mist. Ivaldi, one of the smartest dwarves in all the realms, built an elaborate workshop here. His works challenged the gods themselves. A blanket of cursed mist now covers the realm, causing a slow, agonising death to any who linger. Jotunheim, the land of the giants. Many Jotnar were killed during the great war between the Aesir and Vanir, and eventually they retreated back to their own realm. To prevent further bloodshed, they sealed the realm by destroying the Jotunheim Tower. Svartalfheim, land of the dwarves. Little is known about this realm, as the dwarves are incredibly secretive. Odin had this realm sealed off to prevent any partnership between the dwarves and the Vanir. Vanaheim, home of the Vanir. The Vanir gods, practitioners of the old magic, dwell in this beautiful realm of harmony. Odin has sealed off this realm as part of an accord between the Aesir and Vanir. Asgard, the land of the Aesir gods, a beautiful golden world ruled by the All-Father Odin, who sealed access to the realm in an attempt to prevent Ragnarok. Eight great thrones stand empty in this mysterious chamber, tucked away in one of Midgard's hidden caves. Rumour has it the Valkyries held secret council here, though none have seen this room since the Great Flood and the desolation that followed. The foothills of the mountain once served as a staging ground for any who attempted to summit its peak. Great machinery was built to ease this journey, but it has fallen into disrepair since the desolation. Tyr built his temple here in the middle of this expansive lake. He sought help from all races across the realms, constructing eight travel towers. Before the great flood and desolation, the Lake of Nine teemed with traders and adventurers. Sadly, those days are long gone. Legend tells of a giant stonemason who fell here with a rather large chisel impaled in his skull. The land surrounding his frozen corpse remain uninhabited to this day. The dwarves moved into the mountain to seize the ore for trade, but foul trolls eventually drove the dwarves out, and the mines remain abandoned to this day. This trail was once well travelled, before the great flood and desolation that followed. Now it is plagued with Draugr and Reavers. Unfortunately, it remains the fastest way from Wildwood's Edge to the Lake of Nine. Kratos and his wife met in these woods. And it is here they built their home. Secluded and serene, they spent their days hunting, foraging and raising their son, Atreus. All was peaceful, at least for a time. Home to a mysterious witch of the woods, this cave holds many secrets. But beware the revenants who have taken up residence within. They are hostile to all who trespass. These caves offer a trove of natural resources and were heavily mined by the dwarves of Svartalfheim. And Vari, the famous dwarven alchemist, took a particular interest in the Volander mines, though he hasn't been heard from in many winters. 
Ah, herein lies the tale of Thormur, the doomed stonemason. Thormur the giant, a Jotun, was the greatest mason the realms had ever known. Hoping to save his people from Thor's campaign of destruction, the elder giant toiled day and night, building a massive wall around Jotunheim. But finishing it alone was nigh impossible. He hoped to enlist the help of his only son, Hrimthur. But the boy had the heart of a warrior, not a builder, and refused to complete the task set forth by his father. Perhaps the mason had too much fear, or his son too much pride. Either way, the frustrated Thormur let out a bellow so loud it uprooted trees in the nearby woods. Then their quarrel came to blows. Eventually, Hrimthur ran off into the night, forsaking his father one last time. Thalmur gave chase, only to find himself lost and alone in Midgard. His desperate cries never found the boy, and instead drew attention of another lurking in the darkness, Thor. Their battle was fierce but decisive. A blow from Thor's hammer caused Thalmur to fall on his own chisel, driving it straight through his skull. He landed upon a village, crushing its inhabitants, who were known for worshipping the Vanir god Njord. His fall released a great burst of freezing energy, cloaking the landscape in snow and ice for miles in every direction. Thor always took credit for planning all this, but the truth is the sweaty ball bag just got lucky. Their father-son quarrel forever changed the landscape of Midgard. The dead stone mason lies there to this day an everlasting reminder of Thor's brutality and the consequence of a son who dares betray his father.